gear the dragon here. In the next section of shifting towards lighter weight gear, today we're going to be talking jackets. Um, I was going to do clothing as a whole, but I realized that would take a really long time, so I figured I'd just break it down into segments. Uh, so we're going to start here from the right and kind of move left, so here we go. Uh, first jacket I got was probably 2006-2007. Uh, it's an REI down jacket. It's got 600 weight down. Um, it's very warm, that's for sure. Um, the issues I kind of had with it is it weighs around 27 ounces, 28 ounces, which is actually as much as my shelter kit combined now, so uh, it's a little bit weighty. The other thing is uh, compressibility. Uh, this jacket, when it compresses down, it's about the size of my sleeping bag in its uh, uh, stuff sack. So it was very warm, but it didn't really provide a lot of versatility. Plus, because it's so warm, um, it was just used for really cold conditions. Anything lighter than that, I'd have to use something else. So it was a great start. It was uh, reasonably priced when I got it. I believe I got it on sale for like 40, 50 bucks. Um, Definitely a good jacket, but it just wasn't exactly what I was looking for as time kind of progressed. So as times went on, the next thing I got was this. It's a REI Rev Cloud jacket. It's, uh, I believe it's Permaloft 1 inside. I'm not sure what the face fabric is. It's a ripstop nylon. Uh, relatively compact. It fits in this stuff sack, so you can kind of get a general idea of how tight it stuffs down to. Um, this is good because it has some versatility. Um, the ha it has zippers on the arms, so I can take them off and just use it as a vest. Um, works really well. I still keep it in my car. Uh, in case it gets cold, I can just kind of pop it out and have a good warm layer. Um, I've actually used this down to pretty cold. I've used this down to uh, probably mid-teens, uh, lower 20s, and it's worked great as long as I have, you know, a decent layering system. So. I still, as I said, I, I still occasionally use this, but primarily now it's just kind of kept in my car. Uh, a couple of years later, I, uh, as a Christmas gift, I got another version of the Rev Cloud. This is a newer version. Uh, same thing, it has the zip-off arm, so I can use it as a vest. It also has a hood, which I actually am kind of shifting towards liking hoods. They, uh, for a little extra weight, um, you get a lot of extra warmth, because keeping uh, your head warm is a good way to keep your whole body warm. Um, both uh, these are synthetic. Um, both of them are, I'd say they're moderately weighted. They're definitely not ultra light, but they are relatively light for the warmth they provide. Uh, with this one, um, I still occasionally use it um, in cases where it's going to be wet the entire time I'm out. I'll stick with a synthetic because it doesn't lose its warmth value when wet. Uh, it does lose a little, but not as much as other materials. So. Still occasionally use this, good jacket. I like the fact that it has a hood. Uh, this one doesn't come with a stuff sack. Instead, it stows in its own back pocket and it becomes kind of like a mini camp pillow. So it does have a quote unquote multi-use. Um, but yeah, good jacket. Uh, to kind of cut weight, I shifted for a while towards fleeces. I have a good amount of fleeces. The benefit of fleeces is that Overall, they're relatively low cost. Uh, this vest was like 30 bucks. I also have a jacket that's the same. This is the REI Mirwoods Fleece. Um, they definitely wick away a decent amount of water. They breathe reasonably well. Um, they're not very compact though. I mean, you can kind of roll them up, but they only get so small. Their, their compressibility is kind of minimal for what they have, uh, but they are, uh, they are warm. Um, and as I said, I have a lot of different versatility with fleeces. Uh, but that's just because I have a lot of them. I have like this one here is a mountain hardware. Um, I use this one uh, almost like an uh, addition to a base layer because it's really thin. It's almost, I mean, it's really thin as far as fleeces go. Uh, but it does have a hood. Um, it's kind of tightly fitted so I can wear layers on top of it. I'll occasionally still use this on day trips or when I'm doing summits. I'll still bring this along with me uh, because it dries quickly and it's a good versatile uh, like base mid layer. Uh, another fleece I have is this one. I believe this one's the REI OXT. Uh, it's a half zip. Uh, this one's actually really good. It's got thumb loops. Uh, it's really warm. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's great overall. Um, but the issues with fleeces, as I said, is uh, what you get in reduced cost 
you also have a certain amount of uh, reduced packability. They, uh, if you can, I mean, you can just stuff them if you have extra room in your pack, but they're not really super compressible. Um, then kind of shifting onward, uh, move to kind of what I'm using now. Now, I live in California, uh, so wet weather isn't really consistent. We'll have it on occasion, but it's not really long term. Um, and a lot of times when I'm doing summits, there's snow, so as much as there's uh, wet there, it's not super humid like back east. So if you're on a place that doesn't have a lot of humidity or a lot of moisture, down is your best option. Um, for high quality down, you're going to pick up a little bit of extra cost, but the weight, the compressibility, and the warmth are just unmatched in my opinion. Um, so I'll start off with this one on the bottom. Uh, for Christmas, I got this. It's a Patagonia, I believe it's the Nano Puff jacket. It's really, really light. I mean, this thing weighs just about half a pound. It works fantastic. I mean, I cannot tell you how much I like this jacket. It packs down to the size of a softball. It does come with its own stuff sack. Uh, when combined with other layers, I use this in freezing temperatures all the time. I use it in the snow pretty consistently. Uh, yeah, I, this is pretty much my go-to jacket now. Uh, when it gets really cold, uh, down to the single digits or even below zero, I'll pair this up. Um, recently, I picked up from Golite this, uh, the Golite vest. I believe it's called the Selkirk. Uh, this here only weighs five ounces. It packs into its own pocket, highly compressible, uh, actually pretty warm. I'll, I'll use this as a good mid layer. Um, I'll wear this and just kind of wear a good base layer. And this is good for most outings when I'm doing active things. The only downside I found to this jacket so far is the pocket is its stuff sack. So it packs down to about this size. In fact, almost the same size as this. The thing is that this can easily be half this size. So I might get a small bitty bag or something like that, but I'm assuming most of the time I'll just kind of stuff it in there free into open crevices. So the stuff sack is kind of a, it's a give and take. I know it can compress smaller, but I don't know how much I'm going to puff about it. Um, one thing I'll also say is that from what I've gathered, this is uh, the Patagonia that I have here. It's over $300 and that's, definitely pricey. I mean, if it wasn't purchased for me, I would not be purchasing something like this for myself uh, just because of financial abilities. Uh, whereas this jacket, which is very similar in style, only cost a hundred bucks. And for the hundred bucks, you get a uh, same quality down, 800 uh, filled down, and you get similar warmth factor as far as I'm aware. You use Pertex Quantum, I said five ounces. I believe the actual weight is a little above five ounces, like 5.3 or 5.4, but this one claims to be eight ounces and it's like 8.6. Uh, they do have a Selkirk jacket and the jacket is 139. If I was to now purchase something, I would most likely get the Golite Selkirk jacket instead of this because it's, I mean, for me, they're almost identical. Uh, Stitching is slightly different, but as far as the quality of Golite so far, I found to be really good quality and you get a much reduced price comparatively to what you'd pay if you bought something that's from a more well-established name brand. Now with these, I found what is, in all honesty, one of my favorite pieces of gear when I'm hiking. Uh, this here is the Marmont uh, Trailwind Hoodie. Now, when I was initially looking at uh, kind of like wind shells, I was seeing them in the price range of about $100, sometimes above that. This one here costs 50 bucks. You can even find them on Amazon for 49, or so about 50 bucks. Um, but it weighs around five ounces. It's really super compact. It packs into its own chest pocket. Uh, it creates a really good microclimate. By blocking out the wind, the wind doesn't wick away uh, your excess heat. So that has been definitely a plus. Um, if you choose to go with something like this, I would make one recommendation, and that is after you wash it, um, you wash it on a delicate cycle, hang dry it. Never use a dryer, because I use the dryer on low heat, and I don't know if the camera picks this up, but there's a couple small burn holes here. There's one there, one here, one here. And they're not from fire embers, they're from the zipper hitting them while in the dryer and melting little holes in it. Um, so I found that frustrating. I actually even have one at the top of the hood. Uh, by the time I realized this, it was a little too late for these ones, but ever since I've started hang drying it, I've had no other issues. 
and it dries in like three to ten minutes. I mean, it, it dries really quickly. So, if so, uh, with most of these, um, I'd recommend hang drying because it'll make them last longer, less rough and tumble. Uh, but I use this all the time. So in most cases, I'll wear like uh, whatever base layer I'm wearing, and then I can wear this as a mid layer or the Patagonia as a mid layer, and then use this as a wind shell. And I've had that and been sitting in the snow and been completely and totally comfortable with high winds on top of like Mount Baldy, which is about uh, 10,700 feet. Um, I'm going to be using it for my upcoming trip uh, to Gregonio Peak, which is the highest peak in Southern California. But as I said, if you're in a dry climate or a place that isn't going to have like sustained moisture over long periods of time, you can't go wrong with down. It's the most compressible, has the highest heat retention for its mass, and it's just super light if you get a high quality down. Um, and definitely look around as far as for pricing, because as I said, the Selkirk uh, jacket, which is very similar to this, is only 139 bucks instead of paying the 300 bucks you can paint from Patagonia. Um, so that's basically what I use now is pretty much this. The funny thing is, is that if you combine the Patagonia jacket, the Go Light vest, and this, you're still beneath the weight of almost any of these over here. Um, I mean, at least as far as the synthetic jackets go, because I believe these are probably in the 17 to 18 ounce range, and I mean, you got just under nine, so combined with these, it's 14, plus this, you're about 18 or 19, and it's much more versatile, because then I can actually modify my layer, and these both, all of these, scrunch down to smaller than my uh, synthetic jackets. The one, as I said, the one case that I'd make an exception is if I'm going to be in an extremely wet climate, I know it's going to be raining for several days, I know I'm going to be in high moisture and high humidity, I will definitely go with something like the Rev Cloud, whether it be, uh, most likely I'd use the hooded because for the minimum extra weight you get the extra warmth. Um, but yeah, I, I pretty much, I'll use this in really uh, wet conditions that I know I'm going to be wet over a sustained period of time because this will hold its heat more than wet down. Once down gets wet, it loses almost all of its heat value. Um, you also notice that I don't have any rain gear shown in here. Uh, that'll most likely be in a separate video. Um, but yeah, so I went from 27 ounces down to three layers, and all three layers combined equal about 18 or 19 ounces. Um, and as I said, a lot of times if it's just if I know where things are going to be at, I will just use this and this for 10 ounces, or this and this for about 13, 14 ounces. I can pair it up as I see fit as I look at weather. And that's one other thing I would definitely recommend. Uh, if you're going to be doing any outing, even on day hikes, look for the weather and kind of keep an eye on it. That'll, that will help you kind of keep the weight down because you'll know what gear you need to bring and you know what gear you can leave at home. I mean, I keep an extra uh, emergency poncho in my bag in case just random rain shows up. But if it's actually if I know it's going to be raining, I could bring a lightweight rain jacket because then I know it's going to be raining throughout the day. Um, so knowing what weather you're going to be dealing with really should help you choose and set up your uh, clothing options. Um, you, you'd be wise to invest in down, but if you want to have kind of diversity in layers, pick up some fleeces, the Poly Pros and stuff like that. They're relatively inexpensive, so you can kind of mix and match and make whatever works best for you. Uh, but if you don't have a wind shirt and you do a lot of hiking, especially if you're going to places that have exposed peaks or anything like that, I cannot recommend this highly enough. I mean, it's so small, it's so compact, and yet it provides so much warmth. Uh, most of the time when I'm hiking, I actually just have whatever base layer I'm wearing, and then if it's even if it's windy or a little bit chilly, I just put this on over it, and that's more than enough for most of the day, except for when I stop to rest. When I stop to rest, I'll throw on whatever else I have. Um, so if you guys have any questions or comments, they're always appreciated. Um, and then I look forward to talking to you about other pieces of my gear. Thank you very much for watching.